Alright, no long intros today. This video was inspired by Austin McConnell. Go check him out. Please subscribe. Thanks and on to the video. The font that all metro stations' walls are labeled with was created in 1973 and is called Metron. Even though Metron is a font created for a Prague metro, it's also used in the Petrine funicular. This beautiful man is Jan Wondracek, the voice actor for announcements in the trams as of June 2023. The regular bus line with the longest runtime is 177, with an average runtime of 75 minutes. However, there's a non-standard bus line that's longer. The H1, a special bus line for disabled people, has an average runtime of 95 minutes. There are a total of 279 tram stops in the city. The public transit system consists of 7 modes, bus, trolleybus, tram, train, metro, funicular and boat. Each of the three metro lines has a different voice actor for the stop announcements. The busiest tram stop in the city is Angel, which is used by 78,000 people every day. On the other hand, the least busy tram stop is Hlobetin, used by only 300 people every day. There are four different tram model families running in the city in June 2023. The metro station deepest underground is Namiesti Miru, which is 52 meters or 170 feet underground. On the other hand, a few stations are on the surface, such as Czerny Most or Luka. There are 148 regular bus lines in Prague. The SOR BN 8.5 bus, one of the smaller buses in the public transport fleet, has 24 seats. The total length of the tram network in Prague is 145 kilometers and 700 meters. The shortest distance between metro stops is between Hlavní nádraží and Museum, with a total distance of 425 meters. On the other hand, the longest distance between two metro stops is between Kobylice and Nádraží Holešovice, with a total distance of 2,748 meters. The surrounding area of the Zličín metro station looks like it hasn't been cleaned since the 1980s. You can buy tickets in trams and buses by tapping your bank card. The public transit company pays ČSOB Bank, a subsidiary of which runs the transactions, 1.99% of the price of each ticket. The shortest tram line is Line 13, which is only 5,827 meters long. Only 51% of Prague's trams are low floor. Contrast that to the buses, which are all low floor, except for the historical K line. The public transit company owns 1,225 buses, 781 trams, 730 metro cars, two funicular vehicles and one single trolley bus. The ČKD Praha company, famous for manufacturing the T3 and KT85 tram models, hasn't existed since 1998. The Smíchov plant of the aforementioned ČKD Praha, where a lot of trams were built, is now a Nike store. There are 61 metro stations in Prague. Out of 1,225 buses that the public transit company owns, 499 of them are articulated. In an interview with the Blesk newspaper, the deputy chairman of the Public Transit Union said that Tramline 22 is the least popular with tram drivers because it goes to all the tourist destinations, which makes it really overcrowded in the tourist season. The first electric tramline in Prague started operating in 1891. Some trams in the city are named after important public transport engineers and personalities. For example, we have František Křižík, Matija Hlaváček and Eustach Milcer. The longest name of a Prague public transit stop is Sportovní centrum Horní Počernice, describing a sports center for the district of Horní Počernice. Honorable mention goes to the Institute of Clinical and Experimental Medicine, which would have been the longest name if it wasn't shortened to ICAM. Oh well, better luck next time. The latest tramline extension happened on the 27th of May 2023, with the opening of the new tracks from Mozrany to Libuš in the southeast of Prague. The Prague metro passes under the Vltava river at four points. Riding a bike in most areas of Prague is very unpleasant, even though the city has made tiny efforts to integrate cycling into the transit system, such as building bike and ride facilities and parking garages. The bus line with the lowest number of stops is line 249, going from Zlichin to a new housing development, with just two stops. The transit system also integrates private companies, which run some trains and pretty much all suburban buses. The current public transit card is called Litečka, roughly translating to flyer or something that flies. The previous public transit card was called Open Card and had this red design. Due to a massive corruption scandal, the issuance of new open cards was stopped in 2016 and the last open cards expired in 2020. The last metro line extension happened in 2015 when the A line was extended from Davidska to Nemocnica Motou. 
This is one of the tunnel boring machines that helped build this extension. The Charles University's Faculty of Law has its own tram stop, creatively named Pravnická Fakulta, meaning Faculty of Law. The only trolleybus line operating as of June 2023 is Line 58, going from Palmovka to Miškovice in the northeast of the city, as part of a trolleybus testing operation. The airport Line 119 is currently in the process of being electrified, with the first trolleybus scheduled to run in 2024. I have ridden on Prague public transit more than a few thousand times in my life. From 1974 to 1985, every Prague metro station was fitted with turnstiles to prevent fare dodging. In 1985, these were replaced by ticket validation machines and ticket inspectors. On the topic of fare dodging, the fine for fare dodging is 1000 crowns or $45 if you pay within the first 15 days of being fined, or 1500 crowns or $68 if you pay later. There is also a special fine for people who have a valid pass but forgot it at home. The fine comes out to 50 crowns or roughly $2.2. The station in Validovna, which means housing estate for disabled people, isn't wheelchair accessible. Some metro stations were renamed after communism fell, such as Leninova, which is now Davidska, Moskevska, which is now Andel, or Budovatelu, which is now Chodov. Around the district of Hurka in the west of the city, the B metro line briefly goes through an elevated tube around 14 meters in the air. Only the metro and funicular don't have request stops, unlike the five other modes of transport. Public transit ticket inspectors often travel in pairs, probably because of safety reasons. On the topic of ticket inspectors, the public transit company employs around 150 of them. Quite illogically, the C Metro line was opened first, it was opened in 1974, then the A line followed in 1978, and finally the B line was opened in 1985. Between the stations Vyšehrad and IP Pavlova, the trains of the C Metro line travel in a separated tube under the road in the Nusle Bridge. The longest duration paper ticket you can buy in a ticket vending machine is a 3 day one. In comparison, the longest duration ticket you can buy overall is a 1 year pass. A fourth metro line is currently under construction, leading from the center to the southeast of the city. It's supposed to be completed in 2029, but no big construction project in the Czech Republic is possible without a massive corruption scandal, so fingers crossed on that one. 60 out of 61 stations in the Prague metro system are covered by cell service. The last one, Jiřího Spoděbrat on the A line, is currently under reconstruction. The reopening is slated for late 2024, and cell service should be available by then. Some stations feature toilets, and the price to use them is usually between 10 to 20 crowns, or about 55 to 90 US cents. The D Metro line, which is currently under construction, will be the first Prague Metro line to be fully automated. The top speed of a Prague Metro train is 80 km per hour, or almost 50 miles per hour. There was originally free Wi-Fi in the newest Škoda 15T tram models, but it was discontinued in 2020. The garbage bins in a Prague Metro are bomb-proof. During communist times, a sort of engineer exchange happened. Soviet engineers came to Czechoslovakia to work on the Moskevská station, today named Andel, while Czechoslovak engineers went to the Soviet Union to work on the Pražskaya metro station in the Moscow metro. The Letňany metro station on the end of the sea line is located in the middle of a field. The Prague metro was used as a set for a 2019 Apple Watch commercial. I won't show the footage here because not being copyright striked is very convenient and I'd like to continue with that. A special Christmas themed Škoda 15T tram goes around Prague every Christmas. Taking bicycles on buses in Prague is generally forbidden, except for the line 147 and a special kind of bus called the Cyclobus. There is a special bus line called Airport Express that goes from the Prague main train station to the airport. This bus is operated by the National Train Company instead of the Prague Public Transit Company and the ticket for it costs 100 crowns or about 4.8 dollars. A new bridge over the Vltava River is being built. In a rare act of sane urban planning, cars are supposed to be banned from the bridge and it's supposed to be used by public transit, cyclists and pedestrians. The boat line P7 is only temporary. It will cease operations once the Štvanice bridge is completed. When a metro, train or tram line goes out of order for a moment and replacement bus service needs to be established, the naming follows a simple format. The replacement line is called X and the name of the line which it replaces. I'm excited for a day when the D metro line is completed and then encounter some problem, because then I'll get to ride the XD line. 
The transit system is almost two centuries old. It all started with omnibus lines in 1829, making the system older than the telephone. For a quite hefty fee, you can rent a private tram ride completed with a private tram driver. Thanks for watching to the end. Hope you enjoyed the video. This has been Tramly and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.